This episode is brought to you by Jira. Jira is the only project management tool you need to plan and track work across any team. So if you're a team of developers, Jira better connects you with teams like marketing and design so you have all the information you need in one place. Plus, their AI helps you knock out the small stuff so you can focus on delivering your best work. Get started on your next big idea today in Jira. It feels like you can get your credit scores anywhere these days. Random websites, card statements, budgeting apps, heck, even your dog might bark out a few numbers. It's true, Credit Karma isn't the only place you can find them, but we actually do more with your scores to help you find your next financial opportunity, like a more rewarding credit card, a game plan that helps you pay down debt faster, or a personal loan to help you save more on interest payments each month. Cha-ching! The possibilities are kind of endless. Download Intuit Credit Karma today to get started. Welcome back to the Infinite Rabbit Hole Podcast. I'm your host, Jeremy, and tonight we got a special guest in the house, but I'm going to introduce him last. First, we're going to go to Jeff today. Jeff, with the big Bigfoot hat. What's up, dude? Oh, what's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Hey, How you, you doing? Gotta, you got to put the microphone in your face. It's in my face, man. How you doing? Good. What you drinking tonight, man? Water. What? Good old water out of a plastic cup. We got water. Yep. Well, that sucks. I'm sorry. It's water. It's okay because I also have a tray of cookie dough here. Oh, see, yeah. I'm just eating. I guess cookie dough doesn't really go well with liquor, huh? I'm just eating cookie dough. <laughs> living life, man. Just hey, man. living it. USA. USA. <laughs> USA. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, Yakub, what's up, dude? Ah, you used my my original name. Yes. Um. Gosh, I had a long day, but. Dude, the chickens are laying eggs now. Yeah, Isn't we're gonna that have dope. So we're gonna yeah, have we scrambled had, eggs, fried eggs, <laughs> we omelets. Had five of them today. Boiled so it's eggs. Only a couple chickens so far, but yeah, and they freaked out when we took them. the The hens that laid them were just like in the middle of the the run, just howling, just Rrr! they're so mad, <laughs> and it's just like they're not fertilized. We're taking these from you. They they you, took you our know, babies. Yeah, you know what you do is you you pick the eggs up and then you throw them, and there's a chance that a chick will hatch when it. <laughs> oh yeah, like Minecraft. <laughs> yeah, based off of pure science, by the way. Definitely science, but yeah, so that's pretty cool. And me and Whitney went and saw the new uh, Beetlejuice movie, and you know what? It was okay. Um, I told Whitney I was like, it wasn't a waste of time, but I'd be okay with never seeing it again. <laughs> <laughs> I heard it was a direct sequel. Yeah, yeah, and really? it was. Eh. Yeah, they tried a little bit too hard, I think. But you guess, guess what? I never saw the first one. That's right. Yeah, because you're garbage. Right. Wow, and everyone Some, knows. Sometimes some people refer to me as garbage. Some yeah. people don't. Oh, but and you, I took uh, I took Jeremy's kids while he was at work. I I snatched them up and I took them down and we explored a creek behind the house. So that was cool. Yeah, yeah. they need that. Mm-hmm. I'm happy they have a father figure. Appreciate yeah. that. You're you should probably phrase that differently next time you tell that story. So I took them without permission, and uh, <laughs> like I snatched them up and took yeah, them I, down to the river. I stole <laughs> them and took them down to the river in a van with no windows. <laughs> That's messed up, man. Lord. Well, while he was there, Jacob got me a gift. I you did. see this? See this? Look at it. It is it is uh, the Yeti Logger and Bigfoot Brew House. It's a little. Mm. Halloween decoration. Check that thing out. Nice. Yeah, it's got a little Yeti and a werewolf and, and like a mermaid or siren. I don't know what it is. It's one of the two. Mm. Pretty sweet. Thanks, Jake. You're welcome, dude. I'm at work and I get a text. It's like, hey, I, I left something on Jake's desk or on Jeremy's desk. And I was like, shit, he took crap <laughs> on my desk. <laughs> 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 nope. I'm, you I'm, never uh, know. I'm happy to learn that it was not 
a pile of shit sitting on my desk. It's actually a nice piece of art. I appreciate that. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. All right, moving on to why everybody's here today. We have a guest in the house. Uh, we m- actually got to meet this guest face to face at uh, UFO Days in Elmwood this year. The one, the only, the great Skeeter. What's up, man? Howdy, howdy, everybody. So, Skeeter, I've had questions for a long time. Yeah. And I was, I was saving it for right now. <laughs> <laughs> How do you deal with this podcast? I actually, when I first started listening to you guys a few years back, um, I was like, okay, I dig it. I, it was when you guys would always bicker over and you kind of shoot off topic a couple times. But I like that because it's more, you don't feel it's scripted too much. You know, it's loose play, <clears throat> you know, talking. And that's what got me hooked on you guys because you guys are always like, like you, say, like you say a lot of times, you don't have that echo chamber. And I really dug that mostly about your show was there was nobody 100% agreed with the other person. Good. How'd you find us? I was uh, going through um, on Spotify and I was just searching stuff and I was listening to another show that was uh, almost the same title and I just like, oh, Infinite Rabbit Hole. There we go. And I was looking for the infinite UFO rabbit hole. Mm. And I was like, oh. And I was like, well, this isn't what I was listening to before. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute. I'll check them out. They got some good topics. I'm like, all right, this is pretty awesome. And then I was listening to, um, uh, what's her name? Asher's? Uh, no, not Asher's. Um, mm. It was a different show. Um, gosh, I haven't listened to her podcast in a while. She lives in Vegas. Um Ooh, are you talking? Was I a guest? Yeah, you were a guest on it. Was and it then I the heard, uh, Reparanormal show? Mm, here, hold on. I'll just no, you... <laughs> <That'll> take <laughs> me to. But I heard you pop on there. I'm like, oh, maybe I should really go back and the catalog and listen to the older episodes. And that's when, yeah, I was like, okay, I really got hooked on the show from the earlier ones, even though I started halfway through. Um, but yeah, that's where. I got to really like you guys when I accidentally stumbled on you. And then I heard how your story happened. And I was like, oh, wow, that's really cool that he's actually going through. Oh, it was into, into the fray radio. Oh, oh, Shannon LeGro. Yeah, Shannon LeGro. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where I heard your story. And I was like, oh, I'm going to go back to the beginning and listen to every episode. So that's why I started deep diving into the show and. Yeah, I just fell in love with the guys just from the beginning. Well, sh- sh- middle, but then starting over. Mm-hmm. Uh, they do a lot of stuff. She was recently working with a good friend of ours, uh, Jason Hewlett, on mm-hmm. his Cursed Waters to Ogopogo story. Yep. Um, through that small town monsters branding that they do. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> so she's she's been quite busy, but uh, she's supposed to supposed to come on the show at some point. Nice. Um, but we'll we'll see. She's 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 a very very busy person, mm-hmm. and she likes to answer her emails like four months after you send them. That sounds so. about right. <laughs> <laughs> but no, she's great. Uh, Shannon Legro is awesome. Well, uh, I'm happy to have you with us, man. No, oh, happy to be on. Um, it was nice meeting you at UFO days, mm-hmm. and the uh, the reason why we have you on today is because you have some stories to tell us. Yes, I do. You uh, have story skater. What's that? You have stories. You come at us with personalized playing cards that have our own things on it, and then you're going to come at us with stories too. I'd say That's experiences crazy. more than stories because stories yeah. sounds like you make it up. But I had quite Fair. a few experiences. Well, uh, Jake, Jeff, do you guys have any questions or any comments before we get going? Um, no, man, just thanks again for the card that you brought to us yeah. uh, at UFO Days. That was cool. Yeah, so. Thanks for the shout out on the previous episode. Yeah, so. man. Yeah, man. Uh, I have one more thing to read off. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this for now on whenever we get a review, whether it's positive <gasps> or negative. What? What are you hunting? just reacting oh. to your oh, okay, announcement. Yeah. Was that too well, much? No, it was, it was just perfect. Thank you. Okay. I feel very important now. <laughs> Well, we got a we got a uh, five star review the other day. 
It's been a long time since we got a review. Uh, this comes from Haley. So I want to say thank you to Haley. Uh, her review reads, if you're a fan of all things strange, mysterious, and out of this world, this podcast is a must, is a must listen. From UFOs and hollow earth theories to Bigfoot sightings and ancient mythologies, it dives deep into the weirdest corners of science fiction and beyond. The hosts have a knack for making even the wildest theories sound plausible, blending humor and thought-provoking discussions. Whether you're a seasoned conspiracy theorist or just dipping your toes into the unknown, this show is an entertaining and mind-bending journey. Buckle up, because this ride gets wild. Well, thank you very much. I really do appreciate that, Haley. Uh that was that's awesome. And uh, again, like Jeff said last time, if you're in the chat, do not click on any links in the chat. They are not posted by us. So we have a couple people, or s- somebody jumped in the chat. Yeah, a couple links. some scammers in there. Listen, what we need to do, uh, just make we'll make somebody, one of my people, the moderator for next time, so we can just kick people out and delete chats like that. Okay. Well, uh, I don't know if we ever actually announced it on on the show yet, but we've been going live on Sundays. So there's that. Yeah. Hey, hey, uh, that's Haley right there, by the way. That get woke four four four. That is Haley. That that is the uh, that is the person who left that that uh, amazing review. So thank you, Haley. I see you're here. I appreciate that. Um. All right. You guys ready to roll? Ready to roll. Skeeter, what do we have the pleasure of hearing first, man? Um, I'd say UFOs. There, there's been a lot of sightings between myself and my wife, even. Uh, we've had a lot of crazy experiences in the past. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, ever since I was a kid, I've always looked up at the sky. I always had that curiosity. Is space real? Is there an end? There has to be an end. All the fun conspiracy theories or even thought-provoking ideas of space I went through my whole life, still yeah. undecided. But always staring at the sky, and then all of a sudden I started, uh, geez. I remember when it was ooh, around 10, I was uh, just sitting in our yard. Uh, th- actually, this is the house I grew up in. I bought it from my parents. But out this window... There's a roof, and I just lay on that at night and stare at the sky. Well, one night I'm staring, and I'm, like, watching satellites fly by because I knew what they looked like. And all of a sudden, I see one flying. It's a little brighter than normal. And I'm just watching away, relaxed, like, oh, that's cool. It must be really low. And the next thing you know, it just stops. And I'm like, well, okay. I waited a few seconds. It still stood there, or just floating in the sky and next thing you know it's just slowly getting bigger and i'm like well is it getting brighter or is it getting closer which i still to this day could not figure out and next thing i know it just poof gone just Hmm. vanished so So that that was probably the one of the earliest ones i could remember so before you before we continue Hmm? i think it's important to uh talk a little bit about location right so you're from wisconsin you're from you're yep. local to us how far are you away from elmwood from elmwood it was uh just a what an hour and 15 minute drive so to get to menominee is uh or no it's an hour and a half to elmwood and an hour and 15 to get to menominee oh okay so you're not far away at all no nope. you're well within the range of all the weird shit that happens in elmwood to mm-hmm. to spread over to you, right? Yep. Because I've uh, I've recently come across some some pretty cool stories from Menominee. Oh, um, nice. Probably not enough to do a whole episode on, but you know, at some point, maybe we can scrap together something. But mm-hmm. yeah, man. So it was it was pretty far up there, though. You said right? Yeah, it was quite a ways up, and then it just kept getting bigger. I'd say the about the size of a you know water bottle cap. That was oh. about as big as the ball of light got, and then gone. So, so about about the size of the moon, if you're standing on the ground. Um, a little smaller. A little smaller than but, that. Yeah, but like I said, it just kept getting brighter or bigger. I wasn't sure, so who knows? <laughs> if it so just getting brighter, or bigger. Was it a light, or do you believe it was a solid object? It was a solid whitish blue light, hmm. and it just 
like I said, I thought it was a satellite going by at first, and then it just stopped, and it just blew me away that it just froze. <laughs> and it just like, well, that doesn't do, you know, satellites don't do that. They don't just stop. So after that, yeah, I started researching into UFOs and kind of got picked down in school because I was the guy in the library checking out all the UFO books, and but it didn't bother me. So it's all right when I when I first told my uh, my Bigfoot story to one of my really good friends uh, after I watched uh, In Search of and found out mm-hmm. that there was such an animal as Bigfoot, and I made the connection as to what I saw in Vermont when I was a kid. Uh, I tried to tried to say the word Sasquatch, right? And I didn't mm-hmm. quite remember what it was. And it came out something like Sammy Squanch or something, <laughs> something stupid. And he was just like, what are you talking about, dude? Like, shut up. So I, I myself uh, also went into hiding and, and was that weird kid. No worries, man. Uh, You're I with family. I'm, I'm still a weirdo. I don't care. That's who I am. Uh, <laughs> Jake, Jeff, you guys got any questions about that one? Sorry, nope. it was hard to hit the unmute button. Um, <laughs> so this light was tiny. It was a tiny light. Yeah, started off like when you normally would see a satellite in the sky, yeah. just a little dot in the sky. Jake, you're right. This thing tastes like shit. Yeah. <laughs> That's horrible. You. Are you, Skeeter, are you by an airport per, by chance? The closest airport back then, it's moved since then, was about... Two mile, two and a half miles away from here. Now the airport is about six miles, seven miles away from me. Is there, are you in the traffic pattern for takeoffs or landings? The only traffic pattern that I'm in is for the helicopter for the hospital. Okay. So the plane traffic, if it is, it's super high. And, you know, growing up, just watching the sky all the time, I learned what planes were and, um, I had a cousin that was married to a pilot and he always told us, you know, how to tell a plane at night. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's like, all right. Okay. So, yeah, that's the only thing I was, I was curious about because I was like, mm-hmm. if you're in the traffic pattern for landings, like the, yeah. on the other side of the runway, then seeing that bright nose light that they have mm-hmm. from way out here and then getting closer and closer and closer would make sense. You know, yeah. it's not uncommon mm-hmm. for people to mistake helicopters or planes for ufos yeah um shoot they did it in elmwood yeah they did it in elmwood a bunch um, a couple times yeah i was just like just you know i'm i'm the was it what well, my little title says expert skeptic so i'm like you know <laughs> always trying to find out okay well what could this be rationally but I, even yeah. myself i've seen things that you know i couldn't explain in a rational sense without getting into you know, the paranormal or, um, you know, whatever. Jake has a you know, wild you know. video from when he was in the service. I saw that. Oh, you he did? showed me that. That's freaking UFO awesome. Days. That was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so no, he's saw something yeah. that cool, though. He's definitely seen some weird shit. <laughs> you saw something while you were on the West Coast, too, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, I saw a, um, a shiny... <clears throat> I'm not going to say it was a disc because I couldn't really tell you, but it was very reflective, but it was hovering above the mountaintop um, where all of the, uh, all the radar antennas, all the radar antennas were for the base. So you're talking about the one right next to the gate there where you get on the Pacific coast highway. Yeah. So because the, the whole base is kind of sitting inside of a bowl. So they put mm. the radar antennas on top of that really tall mountain back there. Yep. So that it can, you know, fan out to all mm-hmm. the planes and all the helos and everything circling around. But it was there for a good, you know, I'm driving, so I can't really whip out my phone and, and take a picture and I'm also turning. But yeah, it was sitting up there just still and really reflective and i was like i don't know what that's at what that is you know clearly swamp gas yeah what's that oh yeah swap swamp gas from uh, venus <laughs> um but yeah so i mean but even still if for myself if i see something weird you know i try to look at it in a logical sense of like you know what could this have been other than you know a ufo it's like obviously mm-hmm. it's unidentified i don't know what it is but what could it be right type stuff so I don't know. Just curious. Oh, yeah. I I came across a really, really cool topic while doing research for another topic today. 
Um, the Captain Thomas Man- Mantell UFO case, hmm. um, just as a brief synopsis, right? It was he. He was a military pilot, and he was chasing what he believed to be a UFO, and he was the very first casualty of such an act in in the United States military history. That that's on record at least. Mm-hmm. Um, but the official the official uh, statement from from the military is that he was chasing Venus. He wasn't chasing a UFO. He was chasing the planet Venus. So. We're gonna dive into that one here soon. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I know that. I know that story. Yeah, that's yeah. it's pretty nuts, man. And yeah, I, we kept the, climbing and climbing, and yeah, the the things that they'll they'll tell you, you know, to mm-hmm. uh, it's just this, absolutely. This is a trained pilot. This is like a who was this? This was captain. Uh, I don't know. I think it was Air Force. So I think a captain in the Air Force, Jake, was that O three O two? I don't know. Something like they, that. They got weird ranks. I don't know about the Air Force. Yeah, it's. It, I think it's a lower ranked officer. Uh, obviously, within active pilot, you know, they're they're still working on their their qualifications and everything at that that rank. Um, and uh, yeah, he was he was basically. I wouldn't say dogfighting because th- there were there were no ammunitions involved, mm. but he was definitely chasing what he believed to be a. Uh, a flying saucer or some sort of UFO. I don't know yet. I haven't. Yes, dove. it is an O3 in both the Army, Marines, and the Air Force and yeah. the Space Force. Hmm. It is an uh, it is an O5 in the in the United States Navy. Mm-hmm. Just so you know, Jake. In case you didn't know. Mm. <laughs> All right, Skeeter. Back to you, man. So, yeah. what? How how many UFOs have you seen? I quit counting after a hundred because. <sighs> Up here in the Northwoods, as you guys yeah. are now experiencing, there's spots you could go out in the country, no light pollution, and oh, yeah. get beautiful sky views. And up here in my area, in the Barron County area, it's a lot of space. Hmm. Where I'm at in Race Lake, yeah, it's the brightest area. And then well, Eau Claire is an hour away. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you guys are an hour and a quarter. Um, yeah, it's very dark once you get past the big cities Hmm. so growing up that's you know late nights that's all i did stare at the sky um you guys did a story um about elmwood and i was like it just clicked a memory right back in my head that my wife and i experienced several times i mean for let's say four or five years we watched this orange light that had a black center to it Hmm. It always pulse. It would always get small and big, then small and big. And when we lived outside of town, we we're always driving the same road. It wasn't every night, but maybe two times a week we'd see it. And we always said, one of these nights we're going to chase that down and figure out what that is. And every time we we're just like, all right, we got a full tank of gas. Let's go. So we'd start driving after it. Gone. But we could sit on the side of the road and watch it for a half hour before it totally vanished. Really? But yeah, if it like knew as soon as we were going to chase it down, gone. Just never saw it again. And then we moved from the country into town and we haven't seen it for years. And then last week it happened. Well, now it'd be two weeks ago. And I shot you guys a message saying I saw it, that orange light again. And I was going to get over, pull over the side of the road, take a picture. Trees got in the way, so I pulled up a little further and gone. It, I just watched it zip right out of existence again. That's wild. But Elmwood had the same story, and I yeah. didn't know that story until you guys told it. Uh, the stories I knew, they just saw a light in the sky. It never told us it was that orangish yellow light. And I was like, oh, wow, what a coincidence. It's like it moved up the state. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that orange light was uh, pretty prevalent in Elmwood mm-hmm. stories. Um and I was really trying hard to try to find somebody from Elmwood that would talk about things. We have somebody that we do need to reach out to, Jacob, uh, and talk to talk to that person about their story. Mm-hmm. Hopefully be able to retell that here on, on the show. I don't know what we're going to be able to do with it as of right now. But um, it seemed that Elmwood would have two separate major 
craft in the sky, right? They would have the metallic saucer shaped craft that everyone is used to, right? The, the, the flying saucer. Um, and then they had this bright orange light. Now the orange one, there were a couple cases in Elmwood throughout the history, throughout, you know, the seventies, um, where the orange light actually broke off into smaller, whiter white lights and red lights. Did you ever see anything like that? No, I've no. never seen that. But I'll tell you another story here in a bit that'll make you really wonder. <laughs> um, well, go ahead. Let's hear it. So uh, back when I had my day job, I, I kind of left it after 20 and a half years, but uh, we used to do a lot of overtime and I get there about four in the morning along with a couple other people and right around uh, 5, 45, 6 o'clock, me and this one lady would always go out and smoke cigarettes, have our break before the day shift comes in. So we're out there one day smoking and talking and also we kind of looked over to the, you know, sun hasn't came up yet. We're looking in the sky, and I'm like, well, that's weird. And she she even saw it, too. And she goes, yeah, it's, it looks like an actual five-pointed star, like, you know, like a silver star in the sky. Mm-hmm. We're like, whoa, that's weird. And we're like, I, I've never seen a star look like that. And then it kept getting closer. It was moving in the sky like it was about to go over us. And we're watching the star, and we're like, that's weird. You know, it must be a light off a plane. Definitely mm-hmm. has to be because the airport is not far from that direction where it's flying. So we're thinking, you know, light on the front of the plane and we're just, it seems to look like a five point star. So we're sitting talking and, and all of a sudden we look at it again. All of a sudden we see it go from a star to like a blob. And then the next thing we know, it went to a straight triangle and I'm like, well, okay, that's really weird. And then we watched it as it floated above us, no sound at all. So not like a jet engine or anything, but the weird part about the way it looked when it turned that triangle form Mm -hmm. was um, if you know what uh, a migraine aura looks like in an eye, if you ever had a migraine and you get one of the uh, optical auras yes, where it's like that weird Mm -hmm. lighted effect, um, that's what it looked like. It wasn't bright white like a like a whitish silver like it started it was looking like that and she couldn't even describe how the color looked she's like i i don't even know how to describe that mm-hmm. and i'm like yeah i'm like it kind of reminds me of my migraines when i get an, an aura um a fleck or you know in my eye you know and she's like didn't know what that was so i had to show her a video of it and she's like yeah yeah that's what it looked like so we thought that was really weird she got spooked didn't want to talk about it again but the crazy part is almost a year later almost to the day we're out on break early in the morning again here it comes again Hmm. same way started as a star went to like that blob and then to a triangle as it went over us and still had that uh migraine aura look to it it was just weird i it just (laughs) That was the craziest one. That's the only one I saw shape shift besides going small to large. Few few things stand out to me. One, uh, so you're saying you saw a flying pentagram, yeah? Uh, yeah, like you know, like the kids' gold stars you get, but it was yeah. like a whitish silver. Huh? It was. That's what stuck out, and that's what made me think, oh, it's an aircraft. The light shining out from the nose, you know, and, but didn't stay that way. Hmm. Interesting. And then uh, the aura is also interesting. Obviously, you know, Jeff will tell you, the the U.S. government, they won't tell you, but we'll tell you that they use cloaking uh, technology. Mm -hmm. So curious if that was like a a test test or something along those lines. Um, And then TR-3B. That's the first thing that came to my mind. Mm. Jeffrey, TR-3B, you had nothing? Yeah, I don't know. I think maybe it could have been. I mean, if it's early in the morning, I'm thinking it's probably light reflections off the sun. I mean, I didn't see it. You know what I mean? So it's hard for me to just... You You're know. talking about the aura? It, well, no, the aura is like weird, but the, the star, like it's shape-shifting. To me, like that could be 
sun reflection angle, you know, angle of light off of an aircraft. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, you know, that reflection could be shaping, uh, shifting shapes. Right. But yeah, when you're looking up at it and it's doing some weird aura thing that I don't understand. Hmm. I, I had I had to look about. up what a migraine aura was. I've never had. Yeah, that. a lot of people don't know what it is. So I was like, like, uh, Jeremy's like, yeah, of course. And I was like, <laughs> mm, okay, so I'm gonna look this one up. That's interesting. Yeah, well, I've I've never I get had migraines so bad that I freaking started seeing colors that weren't there. <laughs> so my left eye, I get like a little blurry spot, like closer to like yeah. the inside of my eye. Like uh, you can kind of see it right. I don't know, right in front of my nose. It'd be like this little blurry spot right there whenever I get my migraines. And I it's always it the, the same spot. Of my right. Yeah. Yep. Hmm. Wild. Yeah. Damn Navy. Speaking of Navy, just so nobody chews my head off uh, listening, Jake was so kind to correct me. Uh, a, a captain is an 06 in the Navy. Thanks, Jake. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was counting it out. I was like, Ensign, JG, Lieutenant, <laughs> Lieutenant uh, Commander, Commander, Captain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what a dumbass. Mm. It's all right. I, I served as enlisted. I wasn't one of those people. Yeah. <laughs> Never made it to khakis. What a, what a scumbag, man. Let me tell you. Yeah. We're <laughs> so, Skeeter, uh, let, let's let's have a little fun here, man. What, okay. what do you think is in our skies? What do you think it is? I can't totally settle on one. I got a lot of thought possibilities saving from is it physical is it not could it be interdimensional or could it be from our own planet uh it's it's hard to nail down for me you know to nail down on one concise thing because until i could touch it and you know or get a closer experience on it i can't give it an exact answer Hmm. well I've I've recently bounced back and forth on what I believe some of it is, but let's uh let's narrow it down a little bit, right? <laughs> yeah, it, it's a there's a good possibility of it. I really do believe so. Um, let's narrow it down a little bit. Let's break them up into categories, right? So yeah. the orange light. Mm-hmm. Do you have any theories? That I mean, I I can understand where people get that. Um, UFOs have a psychic connection and be able to hear your thoughts. But at the same time, just to pick out one car on a road, on a big area, and who knows how far away it was, uh, that, I mean, I could see as a possibility because every time we had a full tank and we said we're going to go chase it down, it would disappear. But any other times we could sit and watch it and watch it, you know, for 30 minutes before it totally, like, fade away. Just go from big bright orange down to a tiny dot and gone. Hmm. So that one, I don't know, could be physical, but psychic connection. Now this silver star that transformed into like a blob to that triangle, like perfect crisp triangle. That one I could say could be interdimensional um, because it could be from a dimension that we cannot see that well. And the way I saw it and the way the witness that was with me that saw it was like, here today, she still won't talk about it. But when it's just her and I, she'll tell me, yeah, just don't talk about that anymore. It still creeps me out that we saw that. But the way, you know, it, the look of it, it made me wonder, yeah, is that something interdimensional from a different, like, fourth, fifth dimension that we just cannot perceive? And this is the only way I could perceive it. Hmm. You guys got any questions for him? Comments? Spiritual beings are on a different dimensional plane. That's all I got to say. Possible. Yeah, <clears throat> I agree with that. We've had this conversation a thousand times. Yep. I don't know if they're spiritual beings. That's wow. not. I'm still waiting for you to tell us this big news that you've apparently cracked the code that you're going to make us wait until who knows when to, to Thanksgiving. <laughs> Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. I thought the you said Halloween. Halloween. Oh, maybe it's the Halloween one. See, you don't I'm, even know. I'm working on two <laughs> oh two different topics at the same time, man. I'm working on a okay. Thanksgiving and a Halloween topic right now as as we speak. I'm doing this and research right now. How about what's today's date? The 8th? Yeah. How about you reveal it now for the 9-11 uh, special? Uh, no. The 9-11 special? <laughs> 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 
this is this isn't even the episode that's coming out this week. We have the the two uh, uh, government UFO episodes coming out, and then this one. All right, whatever. Yeah. So you don't make any sense, man. <laughs> Stop sucking. Whatever, whatever dude. Oh, <laughs> uh, all right. Let's see. Do you have any other uh, left field UFO sightings? I have one other. Um, okay. Being in northern Wisconsin, everybody loves hunting. Um, I was out deer hunting one time, and I was uh, during bow hunting season, so all the leaves were still on the trees and pretty green and just starting to die out for the year. Uh, but I was standing in my stand, and I'd had a nice four by four platform and I was 10 feet off the ground and no wind. It was a nice day out, a little warmer than I'd like to be because I'm in a full ghillie suit with my bow and arrow. And out of nowhere, I hear the wind picking up and I'm like, Hmm. okay. So I look behind me and nothing's moving, but I could hear leaves moving. And I'm like, well, that's strange. I'm like, well, maybe the breeze is coming slowly. So I kept watching and watching. And all of a sudden, just one spot of tree branches and leaves were fluttering. This was like a direct breeze, and it just slowly went right alongside me about 20 feet away. I could watch all the tree branches and leaves moving in this one spot and went from behind me all the way in front of me. And I watched it go down because I was up on a hillside watching it making uh, about a 40 to 50 foot pattern of leaves moving. But when it went past, none of the other leaves are moving. It's just this one spot. Like it was a fully cloaked, whatever was there, I could not see. But it was disrupting the leaves like wind was blowing. And I I was watching it go all the way across the wood line until I couldn't see uh, on the other side of the hill when it went over that way. Hmm. So that was about a quarter mile. I watched that travel. Speaking of cloaking, I watched a video. It was an interview with a guy who bought completely into the Richard Sharp Shaver Shaver mystery that we talked about mm-hmm. in the Hollow Earth special um, about the Daros and the Taros uh, in the underworld with the the world of the Titans and and uh, he he basically regurgitated his past life as a uh, Moton Mayan this uh, <laughs> semi uh, I'm not gonna even try to explain it L- listen to the episode anyways so this guy was completely buying into the, sh- the shaver mystery and he was coming up with all these explanations and everything and one of the things that he talked about was about how the daros uh, can cloak themselves um and when when you hear about you know cloaked creatures such as you know people have these uh, weird encounters with a cloaked sasquatch uh which is supposedly a common one or a cloaked dog man or cloaked alien beings cloaked uh, UFOs, some sort of craft, right? Uh, he explained that it was the Daros that were talked about in the Shaver mystery. Now, I don't know if I 100% buy that. I don't know if I 10% buy that. I don't, actually. I do know that. I don't. But I just, I don't know. I heard that and I was like, hmm, I bet you this guy would say that that's the Daros. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, Jake agrees. Jake is a big fan of the Daros. He 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 he's like, yep, definitely the Daros. Yeah, man. I mean, if anyone has ever listened to any of our podcast episodes, they just know I just rattle on and on and on about the Daros. Just that's right. You know, just never <laughs> shut up about them. Sometimes I have to tell you to shut up. About yeah, them. it's like all it's right, dude. A, enough about the Daros. <laughs> Um, Wouldn't it be crazy to find out if, like, this, this just the whole time for all of human history, there's just been this ancient alien, not even alien, right? They're here, this ancient cloaked, cloakable being, right? Like, predators were running around. Maybe that's how, like, all the people are missing, you know, all that crazy stuff. It's just there's actual predators on this planet running around. Well, I've always thought that there's there's something in the national park system, right? I mean, we yeah. we haven't done a national park mysteries episode since I don't know. Beginner. Yeah, it's been a long time. Like a year and a half. Um, we're sort of making a comeback with that with the Thanksgiving episode, sort of, mm. little bit. It's a mystery. Mm. It's not necessarily uh, about national parks, but it is it is interesting. It's around the same genre. So anybody who liked the national park mystery s- series that we used to do, uh, got something special for you. 
coming for Thanksgiving. If you hang tight till the end of the episode, I will let you know what it is, and I will delete it for everybody else that's that's listening and not watching. Yeah, so just like I did with the last episode when I when I spilled the beans on the Halloween series. But anyways, um, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, that's right. The uh, the, national, <laughs> the 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 cloaked beings and the in the national yeah. park system. Jeff, I, I wouldn't be surprised, man. I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, I, I do think that a lot of this stuff is connected, right? Uh, specifically, uh, I'm going to talk about Hollow Earth and the National Park System, Teddy Roosevelt, and his obsession with hunting uh, creatures or mythological creatures, such as the Snally Gaster and, and uh, a couple. I think he tried to... Man, what was the name of that freaking... There's like a something, something bear down in uh, Africa that he wanted to go hunt too. And then he had that run in with a Bigfoot. Um, I believe that Teddy Roosevelt set aside the national parks and created the national park system to hide something. I mean, these things are vast. They're big. Uh, there's tons of cave systems. If you look at uh, cave system maps of the United States, uh, and then you overlay the missing 411 map right on top of it, where you have all of uh, David Plyde's clusters, you will see that uh, these national parks are specifically laid right over clusters of cave systems. Uh, so it's it's definitely some interesting stuff. Uh, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised, Jeffrey, if it was the Daros. See, Jake, I put it in there for you. If it was the Daros coming up through the ground of these national parks uh, and cloaking themselves. Now... I recently did more research into another topic, the Halloween topic. And if anybody knows who uh, Albert K. Bender is, then you will know what the the Halloween topic is. But I'm not going to say it out loud. You guys have to Google that and you guys will figure it out. But Albert K. Bender was also a component to the idea of Daros being on the earth and uh, having the, the ability to cloak themselves both on the ground and in craft. Um, now the, the Shaver mystery was just absolutely stock full of interplanetary travel, traveling in through large holes in the earth to get down to the, the hollow. Um, so I, I would think that if, if, if the earth is hollow, it would have more than just two large entrances at the North and South. In fact, I don't even think those are there. I think that there's other entrances speckled across the world. Um, and I think that, here in the United States, the national park system would be a perfect cover for those. It's going to shake your head, Jeff. You're not going to say anything. Yeah, agreed. No, I think definitely there's probably some, let's say untouched natural ones in some national parks probably, but I think some of the, like the ancient temples and things like that may also be built on top of some of these entrances, you know, maybe under the pyramids, right. Or some of these like super intricate, like, um, like Indian temples that you see, like maybe somewhere down in there, there, you know, Indiana Jones found like a, a tunnel into the inner earth or something. Well, you had those pyramids that were, you know, basically ca- uh, carbon prints. You had the Aztecs and then you had a bunch of in Asia, right. um, you know, in, in various parts of the world, you had these the architecture. That's pretty much, pretty much, like I said, carbon prints of, of architecture from halfway around the world. And it's because they were built by demonic Nephilim prior to the flood. And then you can't, you can't throw in a bunch of water and expect all that stuff to move. So they all stayed there. And then people, when they showed up at those spots, moved in and took them over. Yeah. There he is talking about the Daros again. Just, mm-hmm. <laughs> Obviously. I mean, if you weren't <laughs> such a lepton, you'd know. I don't know what that is. Neither do I. Is that an actual word? Yeah. Is it really? Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna Google that real quick then. You're acting like a nematode right now. <laughs> I know what a nematode is. Yeah, well that's what you are. Not a lepton is that. a particle in physics. A yeah. lepton is an elementary particle of half integer spin, spin and a half that does not undergo strong interactions. How did you not know that already? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what an idiot, man. Let me tell you. Yeah. yeah. You're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, cool. Good stuff, man. Skeeter, do you have anything other than UFOs? Um, I've had many ghost experiences. The joy of where I'm at now is one block over is the cemetery. So I've played in that cemetery since I was a kid. 
I never really got spooked by cemeteries, probably because I grew up next to one. But a lot of different ghost experience. Uh, the craziest one I'd have to tell you is uh, when I was in high school, everyone knew I was the guy who was into weird stuff. Yeah. And like I said, still, yeah, I'm proud to be weird. Everybody else is weird. I'm normal. Wear like a badge, man. Yep. Good stuff. And I had some guys take me out. Some school kids are like, oh, we heard about this haunted house and you know a lot about ghosts. Can you help us? And I kind of had a feeling it was a setup. I'm like, yeah, they're just going to try to ditch me out in the middle of nowhere, which I figured. And luckily, it wasn't too far out of town. And I knew where they took me was this one old rickety house that was very decrepit, about to fall apart. And there's a cemetery about a eh, quarter mile from it that always has been haunted, everyone always said. so. But supposedly the haunting of that cemetery related to this house, which it didn't when I researched it. But they wanted to show me that they saw something. They want me to help them understand what's going on. And so we're walking up to this house. They go, oh, we'll go around, try to find other ways in. So we're crawling between boards and old broken windows. And I'm getting ready for them to take off. So I'm kind of half listening for them to run and watching where I'm going in the dark. And I started walking into this one room, and I'm like, yep, here's the setup. White apparition, like somebody in a real thin cotton uh, sheet over them, lighting up from underneath. I'm like, yep, this is a setup for me. So Hmm. I was kind of mad, and I thought, well, I'll just tackle down whoever it is. So I ran towards it, and it's sitting by this window, looking out at it, and I ran along the wall to tackle it down. Nothing. Just reached with my arms to grab. Nothing. Went right through it. But when I was going through it, it was the weirdest thing happened was it was like uh, mist mixed with uh, static electric. It was the weirdest feeling I ever felt, and that's the only explanation I could think of what it felt like was like a mist with static electric in it. It just, and next thing I knew, I was on the floor, turned around, nobody was there. Uh, Somebody screamed outside and they started running and yep, they they were yelling, ghost, 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 run, run. And they left me out in the middle of nowhere. But luckily I had a friend that lived a half mile away. So it was a short walk. Hmm. But I never thought uh, an apparition would actually have like that sheet look hmm. so because ghosts i've seen before that were just like normal human just a little more paler so i don't i don't know much about ghosts right i don't mm-hmm. I, I know about some urban legends that are based around ghosts like the lady in white mm-hmm. which is the first thing that came to my mind when when you were saying that but i'm gonna be honest with you i don't know a ton that was that was cj's specialty and we no longer have cj as He's a host dead. He's no. not dead. He's, he's dead doing. Death. He's doing a podcast about autism now, and it, and it's actually really oh, nice. awesome. It's a really good show. Uh, he, okay, he has a, fine. Now that I know that he's not dead, dude. Yeah, he's a, he's <laughs> he's doing some really really good stuff. I'm proud of CJ. Uh, but we don't have a host that specializes in this stuff anymore. So, if anybody listening that is a specialist in this stuff that thinks that they can take shit from Jake, Jeff, and I. Uh, and we're a bunch of naysayers, so we are a bunch of naysayers. Saddle up, Sea Biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the closest thing, and I don't even know if it was uh, a spirit, but the closest experience I ever had was on the USNS Comfort when uh, they, you know, they they were telling stories about this little girl that's that runs around the halls and a, an old janitor. And one night I was sleeping, and I got my, my the big toe on my my left foot pulled. And I was like, ah, you know, because I'm going to be honest with you, man, uh, sleeping in the Navy is awkward, right? Especially in, in the, the rack that I was in, because we didn't have solid walls, especially in between the feet. So I was constantly playing footsies with the guy like at my feet, his feet were, he was, he was a tall guy. I'm not a very tall guy. So his feet used to come into my, uh, you know, my little area here. And, uh, he, he would be doing some <laughs> late night stuff and I'd be like, dude, you got to fucking stop that shit, right? Because, you know, I got to be up soon. Stop it. Knock it off. Go do that in the bathroom. 
So <laughs> cranking. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> let me tell you. I, I, I don't know something. Something about two o'clock in the morning. This guy just loved. I don't know what it was, but uh, and then one night, Gross. like I just, <laughs> I just felt this. This felt like somebody with, with two little fingers just grabbed my big toe because I sleep on my uh, on my on my stomach and my feet were kind of pointed down, obviously, and I just felt my big toe get pulled out into or out out of the wreck, and I'm like, whoa, like dude, stop that shit. And all of a sudden, I hear a little girl just hee 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 hee, just like running away. I'm like, whoa! <laughs> uh, cool. That was the only thing that I've ever ever had, and uh, uh, I mean, that thing that that woke me out of a dead sleep. So, I mean, I, I can't a hundred percent say that it was a spirit. I can't a hundred percent say it was a little girl, but I can tell you what I felt and what I heard, or what I believe I heard. You know, and that's the closest thing that I have. Right. I don't I don't have any other experiences when it comes to uh, supernatural beings, you know, spirits or ghosts or poltergeists or, or the such. Uh, so I, I really don't have uh, a lot of information for you on that, but it is pretty interesting, man. Mm-hmm. Definitely cool. I have had several, I guess you could call them ghost experiences. And the last one, I told him straight to his face. It's like, ghosts aren't real. And he's like, oh, and he went went away. <laughs> and I was like, get off my porch. I'm not giving you any candy. <laughs> Could have been in a costume. I don't know, but anyway, it was during Halloween, so I, I don't know. Well, the jury's still out on that one, but uh, no, I've, I've had several experiences like that. I I don't know. I have I have such mixed emotions when it comes to ghosts because it's always some story of like some you know 1800s or whatever sort of like mm-hmm. horrible murder, blah blah blah, all this sort of stuff. It's never the hipster that dropped his vape and went back to get it and got slammed by a bus or something, you know, it's just like, Oh, he's always wandering around, you know, the main street looking for his vape, you know, Ooh, have you seen my vape? Ooh, you know, <laughs> it's always just like some freaking like, Oh, in the 1600s in the civil war. And it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. You know, even like, you know, young earth folks like myself, you know, like they'll tell you that like 85 billion people have existed on the earth in the last like you know 20,000 years it's like it, it in the entirety of it right it's like that's a lot of ghosts that's you're bumping into them at the beach you know type stuff you know <laughs> you know just like it's like ah get off of me it's everywhere right so i got such mixed emotions on it and stuff but yeah cj was definitely our go-to guy for that but even still with all the stuff he could rattle i'd be like yeah you're full of crap but even still i've had plenty of i guess ghost experiences that i i really can't explain like when i was in uh uh, pensacola um florida for training this last time i was basically the general rule was for the barracks the families if you were coming to visit your sailor could go in the lobby but only the sailors could go to the you know second and third floor fourth floor whatever to go to their rooms. So they had to come down to you. So you had to call them down and that sort of stuff. So I'm coming downstairs. I'm on the second floor and I see this little girl in a white ruffled dress and she's, you know, hauling around a corner and I'm just like, Oh shoot. You know, someone's daughter or whatever is on the loose or younger sister, whatever. So I go and I turn this corner and she's not there anymore. And I'm just like, okay. So I go downstairs to the main desk and I I tell the watch there. I say, Hey, um, there's a little girl that's, running around on the second floor just a heads up and he was like was she like a blonde with like a little white dress and stuff and i was like yeah and she's like yeah she's a ghost she's been haunting this base for like a hundred years and i'm just like okay and he's like yeah she was i forgot the story but she was like drowned and at the beach or was murdered or something something along the lines of that whatever but i ended up actually finding the archived news story of this little girl and so it kind of tripped me out a little bit. And I was like, hmm, that's a weird one. And then when I was in the Navy, um, the first, uh, when we were in NAS Oceana, Virginia, the barracks we were in used to be, I guess, like a psych ward. And you could see by the lobby and the way everything was set up is definitely like, yeah, this used to be like a hospital. And they said the third floor where everyone's, where I slept was, you know, or it was, a, it was a small hospital, like an urgent care. And the third floor was like, kind of like a impromptu psych ward type stuff. Um, but I've seen light switches flick themselves on and off because I was roving, you know, at three o'clock in the morning 
the light switches have to be on because in case of emergency, you can't have, you know, 500 people stumbling around in the dark, right? So, you know, you can't see the light in the hallway in your bedrooms because there's a common area and then two separate bedrooms. So the lights have to stay on 24 seven. And so I'm roving every hour and someone's jacking around. They keep turning this light off. So I'm turning them on as I go. And I'm like, this is getting dumb. And so I, I decide to sit around for a second to see who's going to pop out of their door and flip the light switch off. And I literally watch it flip by itself. And I was like, all right, I'm out. <laughs> I'm like, I'm good. <laughs> I just like, just dip. Right. And they're, they were those hard flips. They weren't, you know, little loosey goosey switches where they could just kind of fall under their own weight. Like you actually had to, you know, flip them. So it was just like, you know, one of those things. And it was just like, all right, you know, I can't explain it, but if I was to go in that direction, I would say it's a, you know, spiritual force, but in like a demonic angelic sort of way, right? Something like that. Um, I don't think that people like it linger around for unfinished business or their energy exists or whatever it is. But I have had my own fair share of experiences that I'm like, hmm, yeah, that's a weird one. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so yeah, I I've I've thought the the um the topic was always interesting, right? And I probably should do a little bit more paranormal stuff or supernatural stuff, um, but I don't, right? And that that was kind of the basis for um, I was researching a different topic, and I came across NDEs, um, and the topic was spiritual or ghost and you know that kind of stuff and uh i don't know man it's it's so tough i i want to tie something practical to it right it's an unpractical topic but i want to tie something practical to it i know it just doesn't make sense but uh i don't know i don't know it's i wish we had somebody who could who could speak on this intelligently like jeff maybe jeff could say something he won't but he you know maybe Maybe you could say something instead of just sitting there not talking all day. Anyways, our <laughs> old our old co-host Kenzar Kid is in the chat right now. So, uh, <clears throat> in case anybody didn't know who that uh, K Turtz was, that is uh, that is our old co-host. So, Skeeter, you uh, you got blessed with Kid today. <laughs> yeah, what's up, Kid? I mean, I, I've said before what I think ghosts are. I'm not really big into paranormal either, personally, but. I I have a problem with like the whole time situation. It, you know, the, the linear time thing. Why is it always look? I also agree with Jake. First of all, that's a problem for me. Why isn't the dude with the vaping uh, haunting some spot, but also like, why isn't there hauntings of things that haven't happened yet? If this is like, like time's not linear and we're talking about some inner dimension right where this isn't they're not here in this reality i don't know this is, this is too much for me to think it's just ghosts in our pop culture kind of like mindset see that's kind of the the yeah. route i go on to i go i go very much into that um we did get a comment by the way from uh get woke 444 yeah i was just reading that i, I um, like it it says could be energy imprints left behind by intense emotions or some type of traffic tra tragic events Maybe we don't see the kid who lost his vape because it wasn't that big of a deal. I've always been curious about that. I, I don't know. <laughs> they make us question the boundaries of reality and what lies beyond. Uh, who knows? Maybe it's a time thing, right? Maybe, maybe we only see like these Victorian ghosts because there has to be a certain amount of time. Maybe it's got to be 200, 300 years. Maybe in 200, 300 years, it's going to be nothing but dead vape smokers. The, <laughs> the intergalactic federation of light hasn't declassified the haunting yet for another 4,000 years. Yeah. Sounds about right. The next congressional hearing that we're going to yeah, be talking right. about here is going to be the release of all the classified documents on ghosts. Yeah, but instead yeah, of them not releasing the JFK files for another 70 years, the galactic... That's what they did with the yeah, they just do like another 200 years for the next, you know, haunting. <laughs> That's what they did with the UFOs, man. Yeah. Uh, anyways, good stuff. Um, yeah, Skeeter, man. Sorry, don't really oh, have no much problem. to much to go off there, man. Yeah, even my idea on ghosts, I'm not 100 percent settled on. Like Jake said, you know, if it's true, it's all people's energy. They'd be everywhere. Everywhere we go, we'd be bumping into them nonstop. Very so, true. I mean, you, you couldn't go to the bathroom in peace ever again. Yeah. You know, Someone but, would always be watching you. So I, here's here's what I, what I deduce. All right. So 
what Get Woke said about, you know, a tragic event or something like that, right? So that seems to be the go-to thing. Mm -hmm. So statistically speaking, about 400,000 people die worldwide every single day. Um, Most of those are not in a hospital bed surrounded by their family members, you know, whatever it is. It's car accidents. It's heart attacks, it's, um, um, you know, getting shot, it's getting stabbed, it's, you know, all sorts of things being murdered in one way or another, you know, Mm -hmm. that's just a general statistic. So most people go out in a way that is not, oh, I'm here surrounded by my loved ones and I'm past passing into the void, you know, all that sort of stuff. It's it's horrible, tragic, sudden events, unplanned, you know, deaths, things like that. So mm-hmm. there would be so many ghosts. <laughs> like, it would be crazy, you know, then versus the every so often onesie twosies or you go into the, you know, there's the, an old cemetery and there's some civil war guy in there type stuff. Like it would be constant. I mean, as far as like civil war type stuff goes, I mean, there's genocides going on across the pond in Africa right now. Right. So it's just like, there'd be so many ghosts. So it just, it doesn't sit well with me to say like, ah, that's the thing. It's gotta be something horrible because it's always, there's always something horrible going on. Right. Mm-hmm. Like Ground Zero at nine eleven would probably be one of the most would be the most haunted place in the United States, but I don't mm-hmm. know of a single ghost story that has come out of that place. That is a horrible tra- tragic event coming. You know, here we are talking about it on the eighth, right? So a couple days, and we're we're there for the the uh, anniversary. But yeah, that would be the most haunted place in the United States, but it's not, right? Why is mm-hmm. that? Because it's mm-hmm. baloney. But I'm not going to say that stuff doesn't happen. Right. That it that we still don't get those weird, you know, whatever you want to call it, you know, a, a wisp of like, you know, the afterlife. Now, I have seen other people that have come out from, um, you know, like a like a Christian um, testimony of someone who's come out of the world of like medium type stuff and fortune telling and people that, you know, believe they are contacting people's dead relatives and stuff to check up on them and stuff like that and have said, yeah, all that stuff was super demonic. I was talking to demons that were pretending to be these people because they've existed since before these people were born and knew everything about them. Right. And we're just pretending. Right. So there is that. Um, and that's a very common thing. So, you know, when I dig into it, I'm just like, I mean, yeah, I mean, we could call it whatever we want. You know, we could put any sort of a name on it. It doesn't have to be ghosts. We could say apparitions or spirits or whatever it is. But in my Christian worldview, in my, you know, what I see is that, you know, all that stuff is pretty evil because very rarely do people have that sort of an experience. And they're like, yeah, it was so uplifting. It was so positive. They're like, I was horrified, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I was scared. Right. And it's like, okay, well, what causes fear and deception and all that sort of stuff? Well, that's Satan. Right. So it's just <laughs> like, you know, but yeah, I mean, it, it is still, it is definitely one of those topics that I think I've been somewhat nervous to dance to to kind of toy around with when it comes to the podcast because I just don't want to give it any like room in my brain of like I don't want to research it or anything like that because I don't mm-hmm. want to you know give it any sort of space or limelight but I mean in the um I guess platform we have of the infinite rabbit hole it is something we're going to have to broach at some point um but yeah I don't know there's there's a lot of questions there so it should make for some good content you know? I, mean, I mean, you're the skeptic. You play a role, right? So, I mean, like, if if I present means... something and you're like, "This is horseshit," just I mean, do what you do with everything else. It's Talk baloney. about the tarot's. Right. <laughs> it's tarot's. <laughs> uh, uh, let's see, Skeeter. Anything else yeah. for us, man? Um, well, I mean, we could go on for hours. Well, we I, don't have hours. I know, but I'm just saying. <laughs> so, um. But fun, I'll, I'll give one more fun fact about what Jake was just talking about mediums. I I don't believe in a lot of mediums, except for the few that I've, or fortune tellers, I should say, not mediums, but more fortune tellers. I could always tell the ones I went to, they give you this whole long baloney story. Only twice 
Have I been to where a psychic fortune teller, um, one time she just looked at me as soon as I walked in and pointed to get out, get out, get out right now, get out now. I am not dealing with what you got. And I'm like, you're going to be on that stupid fucking podcast. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then another time, um, well, even that first one, a buddy of mine went in a little while later. Uh, it was a few days later and I asked him, you know, you walked right in, didn't say nothing to him like that. Just gave him a whole, you know, small talk stuff about, you know, people who passed. And um, he said, she was right on. And I'm like, really? And I, he goes, after I got done, I asked her, I said, you ever had to turn people away? And she goes, yes, not long ago I did. And he goes, well, what happened? She goes, there was so much following him behind him. I just could not deal with it. Hmm. And the second time I got turned away is we, my wife and I were down in Eau Claire. There was a lady who was doing down there for a while. And I just say second and third time, uh, we pulled up in the drive instantly. She walked, turned the close sign, even though it was like two, three hours left to when she was supposed to meet people. She goes, I'm close. For I'm, I'm, I'm closed. Nope. Sorry. Closed. Hmm. And I was like, why? I just, that's how I could tell if it's a real one or not, because why can you talk to some people? But me, you're like, nope, there's too much about you. And too much following you, I can't deal with it. So, so I want to open up the questions to the chat. If anybody has a question for Skeeter, please post it. Uh, until then, I have only had one run-in with somebody who uh, <laughs> believes that they are. Demon, demon. It's always demons. That's this guy. Yep. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> can't possibly um, be anything else. When... When we first started the podcast, there was a woman who used to get in touch with me all the time. She still does. Ugh, still gets in no, touch with me. No. Not gonna say don't. not gonna say names. Not gonna say names. It's like saying Voldemort in the in uh in the Lord of the Rings in uh Harry Potter. Don't even say the name. Just I, I don't get that. But anyways. She would like day after day after day, I'd wake up to like, hey, I had a dream about you last night. Hey, <laughs> Uh, I had this weird dream and you were flying an airplane and it crashed. Do you think that has any, any, any correspondence with, with something going on in your life? I'm like, no, it doesn't. Not at all. And she's like, but you're getting out of the Navy and you work on aircraft. Maybe that's the crash of your life. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> um, and I still get, I still get messages. <laughs> from says, her. Oh boy. I remember this. <laughs> um, I still get messages from her like every so often. And it'll be random. It'll be something super out of left field. Just like, hey, uh, you were in my dream the other night and we were we were making stew. And then you wanted to add uh, uh, pixie sticks to it. And does that does that mean anything to you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, it does. You don't want to know. But yes, you're, you're spot on. <laughs> You're gonna find out one day that she's actually like <laughs> literally spelling out your your Destiny. existence. You're just yeah. like turning a blind eye to it. Gosh, it's just like the gypsy woman <laughs> said. This meal would be so much better with pixie sex. <laughs> uh no, I, I, yeah, one day I'm gonna be making a stew and I'm gonna look at some pixie sticks sitting on the on the counter for my kid's Halloween basket and be like She was right. <laughs> Could be this year. Could be this year yet. <sighs> well, um, anything else, Skeeter? Anything? Um, I, like I said, I got a lot. I mean, this house is full of shadow people. Uh, <laughs> this closet behind me, I never told my daughter, but this used to be my room when I was a kid. That closet is the weirdest closet in the world. It gives you a weird feeling. When you moved in here, I didn't tell my kids anything about this house. Huh. My daughter, after she moved out, she goes, I don't know what it is about that closet. It's not scary. It's not evil. It's weird. She goes, every time I'd go in there, it was weird. And I'm like, okay, I never said nothing to her. So I know, okay, that's two people experiencing the same thing. Then my one son went into it and he goes, why is this weird feeling? Like, it doesn't feel like it's the house. I'm like, I don't know. Huh. So, Portal. 
Dad, why is, there, why is there a Could hipster in your closets? <laughs> I don't know. No monsters. We have one of those. Um, so this, if I leave right here, right? Mm -hmm. And I'd hang a left instead of going straight up the stairs. The guest bedroom, Jeff knows, it was to the right. If I hang a left, that's the utility room. So it has the water heater, the boiler, all that sort of stuff in it, right? And soon we'll have our um, um, softener and all that stuff. But anyway... Inside that room, there's a, another closet, and it's it's short. The door is probably four feet tall, and you open it up, and there's no lights in there, and it's underneath the stairs, and there's a chalkboard in there. And I get a weird feeling in there, like this was the punishment room. Hmm. It's so weird. There's like a full-size chalkboard dude. in there. What? Yeah, the you got the chokey in your house? <laughs> it's, it's very strange. I'm just you guys like, know that reference? No. no. Is it from, from Star Wars? No, no, from Matilda, Matilda, man. I haven't seen that movie in since it Dude, came out. The uh. Chokey, bro. That shit used to terrify me as a kid. <laughs> I, had a teacher, I had a teacher that was like the Trunchable, bro. It was just oh, yeah. like that bitch. Yeah. Make it eat a big chocolate cake. Eat it. Blood, sweat, and tears. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's, it, it gives me like a weird vibe to it. I don't know. And it's just like, ugh, there's a lot of abuse that happened here. <laughs> <laughs> I just kind of feel it. And I talked to my neighbors because we've only been, Whitney's been living in this house since November. I've only been here since January, but Whitney, or we, we'll talk to the neighbors and they're like, oh yeah, those people were total shut ins. They had a bunch of kids, they're like four or five kids, um, and they never went outside. You never saw them outside. You never saw them at any of the community events. Like these, these folks here, this neighborhood that we're in, like they have a, like every six months, they have like a, block party type stuff and they're like you never saw them out and any of that sort of stuff and anything and i just kind of walk it into that space and that's where i keep all like the ammo and stuff and right so like all the ammo cans and stuff i just kind of throw in that that little closet but like walk in there i'm like huh, so ugh, how weird many kids <laughs> left that house huh they gotta worry about is how many kids left that house or property you got kids in your walls jake <laughs> Good i here. don't know mm. i'm not gonna go looking around to find out tell you that mm -mm -mm. much mm -mm. <laughs> just mm. Do the shave and the haircut knock, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I get a knock back, back, well, Whitney, pack it up. We're moving. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, before we go, uh, I'll go ahead and, and do what I promise. I'll, I'll let you guys know what we're going to do for Thanksgiving. Uh, anything else? Anybody? Yeah, I was about to reply in the chat to Whitney. She said, nothing weird has happened here. First house to not have weird stuff happen because you don't know what I did in the basement when I was staying there. <laughs> <laughs> um, There's kids in your sheets. You want me to call her and see if she'll come downstairs and, and tell what happened in our old house? Uh, yeah, I mean, if you, if, if you want. Let me give you a tell, her, tell her to hurt. Make it snap. Well, I could tell her. Make it snappy. Make it snappy. Right. <laughs> Past my bedtime. You don't have to call her. She's literally watching. <laughs> oh, well. Yo, Wowens. I'm calling her anyway. You want to you wanna talk to the world? Let's do this. Yeah, for real. Like, I'm busy watching a show. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Video games. So she's probably be like, no. <laughs> Pretty yeah. sure she. If she's not answering, then she's not watching the show currently. <laughs> um. What's even funnier, she's probably running around upstairs looking for the phone when she could <laughs> come down there and tell you no. You want to come down here and tell the tell be in the episode and tell everyone what happened in the last house? I, I don't know. You, you put it in the chat. You said nothing weird has happened here. First house to not have weird stuff happen. You want to come down and throw it on the episode? Next, uh, pretty much passed out. Yeah. All right. Well, come on down. Okay. All right. Who you got, Wowens? Yeah. Get the Ooh, wifey on for the first time, four years in. First time. Yeah. And I was here for it. Yeah, you were. Right. Yeah. We're making memories. Sorry, Kenzer. <laughs> <laughs> Please, <laughs> <more ones. laughs> Um, We'll see while we're waiting. If anybody in the chat has any ideas for episodes, Skeeter, you got an episode? You got an idea? You got, a, you got something you want us to cover, man? Glimmer Man. Glimmer Man, huh? Who's been I thought spotted? You said Slender Man. I was like, mm, I already did. It. No, no. no. <laughs> um, he uh, now I forget the Navy base that's in the United States. That's not far from National Park or Park area. Um, it's probably the one in Oklahoma. I can't remember where it was, but 
uh, or the name of it, but Glimmer Man has been spotted. It's kind of like the Predator look when people see it, and they call it like it's a Glimmer cloaking device. So, uh, yeah, I got somebody agreeing with me in there. So, <laughs> in the chat um, for being here. But, yeah, it's interesting story because a lot of people are seeing this all around the world. And I kind of saw something like it, but it was more just like an outline uh, of a visible thing, whatever it was. Hmm. So, but the stories I've heard about it are really interesting and maybe something you guys could dive into for an episode. I see it is an urban legend Mm -hmm. and typically cover urban legends on Halloween, but Mm -hmm. I could always, I could always kick, uh, Kick men in back, men in black, mm-hmm. back a little bit. Glimmer man. I don't know. I gotta see if there's books on it. I'm trying there. to remember if you guys did Black Eyed Kids too. Or we not. did, but I'm going to be redoing that because I it was a terrible, terrible uh, episode. Mm-hmm. That was back before I I did you know better research and stuff. Mm-hmm. So Black Eyed Kids will be redone at some point. Nice. How long does it take to get across your house, Jake? It's past my yeah. bedtime, bro. There she is. Oh, See? Hey, on cue. Hey, look at hey! that. Hey! It's her and not a kid. <laughs> a ghost kid. <laughs> she don't want to be on camera. <laughs> Wowens. Gear me. Gear me. Say things. Okay. Um, the first one was in Norfolk. Uh, when we were living together, a bunch of Navy buddies. And we'd only been dating a few months and we were living in like the attic space that was changed into like a bedroom. So Mm -hmm. there was like a staircase up to in our bedroom. And sometimes I'd have like my blankets pulled off and we didn't have a dog in there or anything. I just like fight it and he would be asleep for it. And then one night he just popped up, just sat right up and he's like, you don't see him. Do you see him? Like what? (laughs) <laughs> he's like looking right at the stairwell. It's like middle of the night. He's like, you don't see him? I'm like, see who? And he's like, huh. And he lays back down. <laughs> so I was like, great. Well, fuck, I'm, I'm not, not getting to sleep now. The rest of the night. <laughs> um, huh. And didn't you have like a penny or a nickel thrown at you in the shower the one time? Yeah, I had a dime. Yeah, and you said it's because you were a Jew. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I'd have my blankets pulled off. Like that was before we even had Fred, and we didn't have the dogs upstairs. So I'd have, like be fighting something to like pull the blankets back up. And then we heard all the footsteps running. Yeah, they're running upstairs. That house is creepy. It was, huh. it was a um, the house was built in 1901, 1901, yeah, or something like that, right? And it was in in uh, South Norfolk, so it was in the hood. It was gross. It was in the hood, and it was decrepit and falling apart. We call it the Wonka house. Kitchen falling in crawl space. And I was like five feet tall in the house. Kind so of, yeah. The, the windows, doors, and stuff like that would stick because they were all kind of like Willy Wonka. Yeah. Stuff. Kind of looked like a Beetlejuice, like down <laughs> in hell or wherever it was, purgatory. Yeah. In the waiting room, Beetlejuice house. Huh. Interesting. But, yeah, so that, that place is creepy. Uh I don't think we had anything happen in our house that we bought. No. But in California, we had some crap happen. Uh, we were listening to... What's that guy's bear? Bear Girls. Oh, no. We were listening to... Uh, Big old dude. Bear He's like... Yeah. He's like into survivalists, like preppy, but also really Christian. And he was saying a, uh, a prayer at the end of his little uh, YouTube video. And our TV shuts off. I'm like, oh, hmm. what happened? Hmm. Uh, the TV wasn't plugged, and it was like three feet away from where the outlet was. No dogs were behind it. Nothing was there. Basically, our TV in an entertainment center, and it was unplugged hmm. from the wall, and it was like the outlet was like thrown as far as it could go inside. Cool. While he was in like in mid prayer, hmm. and then. Uh, little bit after my knee surgery it was more comfortable for me to sleep on the couch just keep my like my knee elevated and everything um and i swore i heard jake peep around the hallway and just like do like a like what do you want (laughs) (laughs) 
Because I saw like a shadow of a head like come over and just like, Psst, what? Go away. And so I rolled into the couch and then I felt something rush up on me and I like flipped over and there was nothing there. That one was the knee surgery drugs for sure. Oh, I wasn't on <laughs> drugs anymore. No, nope, ibuprofen. The Navy. Yep. They give mm-hmm. you enough drugs to get you through like three days and then just ibuprofen. It's mm. I had surgery. They gave me I wanna say like two volumes. Yeah. And then everything else was ibuprofen. They just throw ibuprofen at anything. You got a nosebleed it was ibuprofen. It was the withdrawals from the No, it was it was a few weeks after it. Ooh, tell them about uh Renee's Oh, that place is creepy as shit. Can I cuss? Yeah. All right. Um <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's too Jeremy's late now. <laughs> um, this is a family from <sighs> Lick my butthole. Anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, Renee's house. So, so their bedroom. Let me, let me throw this out there. So okay. Renee was my best friend in high school. Did you guys hear me okay? Yeah, sort of. Okay. I don't know how it's going to come out in audio. but So Renee was my best friend in high school. And... He and I both met when we were, I want to say we were Christians because our families went to church type stuff. Um, and then as soon as we became adults, like I, I found my way back to Christianity through my life sucking. Hey, you found your, your, your sewing kit. Nice. Buy your other sewing stuff. <laughs> I found my way back to Christianity, but he he dropped off and went from, you know, like what people would consider like a Bible thumper type of a person to doing like blood sacrifice witchcraft, right? So, and he still is fairly into that space. So when we were um, getting ready to move to California on military orders, it was during COVID and we were selling our house and we were going to go straight over to California. Well, because of COVID, they put me on a hold for nine months. So Renee, who is my best friend in high school, he actually joined the Navy shortly after me, and he had a house right down the street from where we were. And so we uh, we got to, we were kind of in this pickle where it's like, well, we're closing on our house. The, the buyers are going to move in. What are we going to do for nine months? And he just so happened to be out of um, tenants because he was out in Japan, so he was renting his house. So we moved into his house, and... Um, when we were moving in, it was a wreck and the old tenants, they abused it. And so we had to help him fix it up and all this sort of stuff. But while I was moving in, all of his boxes and stuff of his clothes and everything that he didn't take to Japan were upstairs in the master bedroom. And so I asked him point blank. I said, Renee, is there anything in this house that is going to be like a, a magnet for the demonic, the spiritually oppressive, whatever you want to call it. And he's like, no, I don't think so. I was like, do you mind if I go through everything to be sure, right? There's no Ouija boards or, you know, candles or any sort of sacrificial implements or whatever it is. And he's like, yeah, go for it. And so I went through and I didn't find anything. Um, But the fact that those sorts of things were done in that house, you know, led to a lot of interesting stuff. So you can go ahead and tell it from here because I was asleep for most of it. (laughs) So, well, I mean, oh, he's definitely awake. Um, so every time, so you could kind of see like the upstairs bedroom. It's kind of like the same thing as our first house that we lived in. Like the attic was converted into bedroom. So the staircase, you could kind of see the bedroom door from like if you're walking by. And I'd always see something up there every time I walked by. I did not like being there alone at all. Felt super uncomfortable. Uh, hmm. Kept hearing weird stuff. I hated that house. Absolutely hated it. Weird. Uh, but S- also, such a... Oh. Nope. What's up? Nope. You go. Oh, no. You go, and then I'll tell a different story. Oh, I was just going to say, it's just a, a natural path of progression. Christian demonology. It's, hmm. just, it's very strange, actually. But um, go ahead. But prior to meeting <clears throat> Jake, I was leaving, living with my parents because I moved back from Oregon. I was getting ready to join the Navy, so I just stayed with them. I think Jeff's asleep. He'll and be right. then... Oh, there he is. Uh, I woke up in the middle of the night feeling something grabbing my face. Completely nice. dark, couldn't see it, and it felt like it was kissing me. It was freaking, it was Weird. creepy. It was super Oof. creepy. Uh, I hope something tries to make out me tonight. <laughs> I'll fight it. Come on. <laughs> but it was kind of like <laughs> frozen. I don't have like, uh, what's that term? Where you Sleep paralysis. Yeah, I don't have that. But it was just 
I felt something grab my face. You can totally have sleep paralysis on a, on a one point episode. Like you can just, you can yeah. have it randomly. I had it one time in my entire life. Super fucking creepy. Yeah. But I had it several times before I learned what it was. And then I learned what it was. I haven't had it since. Yeah. Yeah. So Absolutely. maybe it was like the one time deal. But uh, it, when I, where I grew up was in uh, Southern Idaho. So my dad's house is probably built on like some Indian graves or something, but down the hallway, on the other side of the wall in the hallway was a my mom's like stand up mirror, and there was always like this smudge that you can only clean off with just soap and water. Windex, nothing would clean it off because you'd always see something run down the hallway hmm. through the wall, and even my our all of our dogs would alert. They'd get up and just stare down the hallway with like their back raised up. <laughs> And my Weird. bed would shake there too. My bed would always shake. I thought it was a dog, but I'd be like, "Stop it! Stop shaking! Stop itching!" And then I look, and I'm, I'm the only one on the bed. <laughs> Super weird. To give um, um, to give relevance to the the weirdness of Renee's house, right? Um, before he went to Japan, he confided in me one time he say he's like i think i'm getting a little bit too deep in um these practices that i'm doing i was like all right what's up dude and he's just like i mean i'll tell you straight up that any amount of dabbling is dumb but you know i was like what's up man and he's just like he's like um so me and he was married at the time he said me and my wife were uh being intimate and I looked past her. She was on top. I looked past her and there was a being standing at the foot of the bed watching us. An all black being just standing there watching us do it. And he was like, I wake up and I see this thing standing at the bed, like standing on my side of the bed watching me sleep. And I'll look right up at it. He's like, it's, just, it's always there. It's there when I'm changing. It's there when she's alone. It's there when we're being intimate. It's there, you know, following me around the house. He's like, it's just, it's there constantly. He's like, it's starting to freak me out. I was like, yeah, you should probably stop. Didn't stop him. But it's just <laughs> like, you know, so, you know, it's like for us, you know, hey, it's a godsend, right? Hey, we, we got, you know, the protection of the Holy Spirit. We're not scared about any of this sort of stuff, you know, or, or we're, we don't have anything to be afraid of, even if it is freaky. Um but still, I want to protect my wife from any sort of trauma she's going to develop, right? So, you know, hey, before we move in, is there anything crazy? And he's like, no, nah, I don't think so. But yeah, it was it was definitely creepy. There was you you could feel this. I don't know, like maybe maybe like Skeeter is describing with that closet. It was like a heavy feeling when you walked into the house. It was just like this is this, something's off right now. It was very strange. Hmm. Yeah. All right, we gotta we gotta start cutting this off. Uh, Jeffrey has to get the bid. You can see him. He's he's troopering through this. Look at him. He's such a good sport. Hi, Jay. Hey, thank you, Jefferson. Sorry, guys. I'm in a different time zone, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. Yeah, Anyways. I got a, I got a blue collar career. You know, oh, yeah. we get up and we work hard early oh, in the morning. Blue, pay blue our American taxes. <laughs> <All right. laughs> yeah. They took our taxes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Skeeter, man. It's been a pleasure. I really do appreciate oh. you coming on today, man. Happy to be helping you guys out any way I can. Yeah, dude. You, you've Posting been awesome. every episode. You've been We're awesome. Have you at the next Elmwood thing, and you're going to be our guest. Yeah, yeah, I man. already booked it off, so come to see you guys. <laughs> if it wasn't for Skeeter, we would have had a, a really shit uh, presentation at Elmwood, so yeah. uh, Skeeter came through for us. Yeah, he fixed the, the audio system. Dope. Yeah, fixed the audio. Got your video clear as i could get it so so skeeter you uh you do some stuff um uh, you do a podcast don't you i do uh, mainly videos for youtube and uh whether for i used to do it for my dj and all time but i kind of got out of that but as you guys learned i'm a big fan of Yu-Gi-Oh. i got hooked on it when my kids were little and um I do pack openings. I mean, I got right here cards. Um, that's what this room is mainly for my collection room. But um, yeah, I do that uh, under Skeeter the Common King on YouTube. Nice. What about um, you sent me a link for a, a movie discussion show on YouTube one time. Oh, what was that? <laughs> 
Gosh, I forgot. Yeah, you guys are. Yes. I can't remember what you guys are talking about. Hellboy. I remember you guys talking about Hellboy. Gosh, what was that? Well, that was a while ago. I'd have to look it up. If I'm, if you don't if you don't remember it, uh, yeah. s- send me a link again, and I'll I'll put it in the mm-hmm. show notes. All right. All right. Um, but thanks, man. I really do appreciate you. Oh, I appreciate no all your support that you've given us for for quite a while now. So, um, yeah. hopefully, you had a good time. Oh, I know we this- had amazing time meeting you guys. It was awesome. My wife is starting to listen to the podcast now. So nice. She Good just stuff. heard me, but after she met you, she goes, those guys are really cool. You know, they're <laughs> down to earth and they're pretty fun. And it was the only presenter that we actually stayed and listened to. And I, I was happy they talked about Elmwood and so the other ones were whatever. Yeah. The people were snoring in the, in the MUFON presentation. Mm-hmm. That guy sucked. Oh, you mean... Well, I don't want to talk bad The, the one right right before us. No, talk, he didn't get ever listen to this. He was terrible. He, terrible version. He didn't even know he was part of MUFON or where <laughs> in MUFON. Minnesota MUFON. I mean, he's like, I am with the... Uh, Shit, what am I with? Looks at the screen <laughs> of the present presentation. He's like, Minnesota MUFON? And I'm like, you don't know who you are? <laughs> like... Yeah, we stayed another 10 minutes and walked out and came and saw you guys again. Right on, man. Well, mm-hmm. very much appreciated. Appreciate the, the cards. Uh, yeah. g- great stuff, man. It was nice meeting you. Nice meeting your wife. Uh, can't wait for next year. It's going to be fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, hopefully, we'll have more in store. Jake, oh, Jeff, yeah. you guys got anything else to add? No, but thank Jeff you so much for uh, for joining us on this episode. I'm going to have Whitney oh, say bye on the end of it. <laughs> so Aww. I got her sitting in the in the pilot seat but yeah no thanks for joining us on this episode it's been cool we should definitely have you on again sometime yeah. like even not really talking about um maybe any of your experiences but just you know to kind of guest in that'd be that'd be pretty cool oh happy um, about. But yeah it's like uh it was it was really neat um mm. being at the being at the booth in elmwood and then you coming up and being like, yeah, I've been listening to you guys for years. You know, it's just like, <laughs> really? <laughs> like, that's crazy. Yeah. Like, I always don't want to be creepy. You know, be like instantly the super fan. I'm like, no, nah, wait no, a while. But, I mean, and then but for real, up. like, you know, as far as I know, I, I mean, it took us, w- me and Jeremy talk about the origins all the time. But for real, it really did t- take us a few practice episodes to get into the routine of talking to mm-hmm. each other on the podcast and being like the audience is just a fly on the wall, listening in on the conversation type stuff, right? Like days after the recording, Mm -hmm. but I never really expected to meet anyone that I, that listened. Right. And, um, and that changed when I moved to Wisconsin, I had a coworker that's been listening. Right. And he's just like, Oh yeah. You know, I listen to your guys' show. (laughs) It's like, that's wild. Having you come up and being like, you know, I've listened to you guys for years and stuff like that. Like never would have expected that. To actually yeah. meet someone besides like having them on like Kenzar and stuff like that, that actually like, you know, is a fan and stuff like that was just a trip. And really what it put in perspective for me was that, you know, we're talking to real people. Mm-hmm. Like it's, it's just a weird thing. It's not just numbers on a screen of like, Oh, so many listens or whatever it is. You know, we're actually talking to real people and you know, that we're impactful and just, even if it's just like the comedy aspect or letting people kind of, you know, zone out for a little bit. That was the biggest thing for me and Jeremy coming up during COVID was just like, let's give them something that kind of takes their mind away from all the BS that's going on in the world right now for an hour, right? Type stuff. Mm -hmm. It's like, we really wanted to kind of press that in as well as talking about some cool stuff and, you know, maybe getting someone's voice out there for some weird experience they've had. But it was just like, there's a plethora of reasons, but it definitely like hit the mark for me as just like, oh, wow, this is, you know, this is pretty cool, you know, that we're, you know, maybe someone's at work and they're just listening to us to kind of zone out while they're doing their, their job or whatever. You know, I listen to podcasts while I'm working on planes and stuff, you know, it's just, it's just Mm -hmm. what I do, but it, it really was very, very neat to meet you. And then having you on an episode, I mean, that's just super cool. And I appreciate you having the courage to come on and share your experiences and stuff and not caring what people think. Like you said, you know, growing up being the weird kid and stuff like that. I mean, I know Jeremy experienced that and he told me when he first had his 
when he first told me about his Bigfoot experience, he's like, I don't want you to like get all weird on me, but I had this experience. And he says that I c- said he was full of crap. <laughs> Sounds like something I'd say, but I don't recall saying that. But <laughs> Because you said it. Yeah, like, I would have been like, tell me more. Tell me more. Keep, yeah, keep right. It but it's just like, you know, it's it's cool. It's always cool having someone come on and tell us about what they've experienced, regardless of what we personally believe or think, right? Mm-hmm. Really, when it comes down to it, it's 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 like a cool story. I don't know. It's just like it's it's cool hearing other people's perspective and experiences and things like that, even if it's way outside the scope of what I personally am like, nah, that's ridiculous, blah, blah, whatever it is. But I appreciate you coming on and you you telling us yeah. your experiences and stuff and, and having this chat with us. And I never knew that my wife would end up being on a podcast episode after four years. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> thanks to nope. me. Thanks to Victory. me. Good job. In the weird closet. <laughs> Jeff, anything? No, man. Uh, yeah. Glad you came on, bro. It's good to meet you. And it's good. It's, it's been real. It's been fun. It's been real He's, fun. No. He's ready for bed. <laughs> Yeah, I'm so tired, guys. I'm sorry. I'm so he gets I'm, like I'm, this at the end of the episode. Come on, I I'm gotta so be up tired, dude. Yeah. We got to start doing these like not late at night on a Sunday night, but you know, mm, not gonna happen. Anyways, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well. Uh, thank you to everybody that showed up in the chat. Really do appreciate you guys stopping by. Uh, if you guys, you know, uh, ever want to guest on the show and come and have a chat with us, just let me know. Yes, kid. That means you too. Get woke. Everybody in the chat that that sounded off today. Thank you guys. Uh, you guys are always more than welcome to to reach out and uh, schedule an episode. Uh, until next time, everybody. This has been another episode of the Infinite Rabbit Hole podcast. I'll see you in the next fork in the path of the Infinite Rabbit Hole. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. See ya. Hey, everybody. Thanks for checking out the Infinite Rabbit Hole podcast. If you're looking for more of our stuff, head on over to InfiniteRabbitHole.com where you can find links to all the podcast players that we are available on and even our video platforms such as TikTok and YouTube. While you're there, make sure to check out all the links for our socials and hit that follow so you know when all the new stuff from our podcast comes out. And until next time, travelers, we'll see you right here in the next fork in the path of the Infinite Rabbit Hole. Bye.